Thank you for tuning in ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Emerging Threats Group video. Today we will cover the effectiveness of the American made long range anti-ship missile, the AGM-158 Charlie. We will be putting it up against the PLAN Shadong Carrier Strike Group. Uh, they will be on board both US Navy destroyers and US Air Force bombers. Uh, this is a similar setup to the last uh, video we did. The Chinese forces are completely unchanged. However, we have replaced every single Tomahawk on our destroyers and replaced them with the hypothetical surface launched long range anti ship missile. And then we also have access to American bombers carrying the uh, air launch, which is the standard version of the long range anti ship missile. However, we've also armed some of our B 21 Raiders with quick sync uh, JDAMs. Uh, these weapons are designed to explode under, underneath a ship. Um, therefore, acting more like a torpedo and breaking the ship's back, exploding them that way. It's uh, apparently a cheaper way to sink ships. Uh, however, JDAMs do have quite a short range on them. I think it's about 13 nautical miles in uh, command mono operations. So our B-21 Raiders will be flying straight into the Chinese missile engagement zones, uh, which... As we've seen in the last video, the Chinese SAMs, especially the HHQ-9 Bravo, is a rather effective weapon. So we are also going to attempt to deplete the Chinese um, Surface Actions Group's missile stocks with a combination of, well, mostly long-range anti-ship missiles, but also we're also going to throw in a few drones carrying um, small diameter bombs as well. But yeah, the more about the drones at the moment. Starting off with, we do have the same American setup as last time regarding the destroyers. The only difference is we have replaced all the Tomahawks with the long range anti ship missile. As you can see here, the weapon does have a range of 430 nautical miles. Uh, it does have an IIR seeker, meaning it doesn't use radar to find its target. Uh, it does have a passive radar seeker, meaning a bit like the American made harm and the British made alarm missiles. Uh, although that's out of service now, it can use uh, enemy radiations, well, enemy radar signals to home in on its targets. And we also have a quite a sophisticated defensive ECM on board. As you can see, it's also a very stealthy weapon. This is similar to what the B-21 Raider is, if not, uh, it's, it's very similar, in fact. If we bring up the B-21 Raider's radar cross-section, uh, which is also useful because we will be demonstrating the capability of this platform in this video. You will see that, yeah, the radar cross sections are very similar to each other. It has a lot of sophisticated systems and it also has a larger warhead than the Tomahawk and can be used against uh, multiple different types of targets, not just surface ships. Uh, the range of it is identical to the air launch version. Uh, as well as our destroyers, we do have our helicopters again, especially the MQ-8C with its uh, radar is very useful for shining Chinese assets. And we've replaced our MQ-4 MQ-4 Triton drone with a combination of other aircraft. So, as you may or may not be aware, the MQ-4C is a very expensive platform. It's at least worth a hundred million dollars probably even closer to 150 million by some estimates so we have replaced that with 16 xq-58 valkyries we've also put in some experimental us have raider drones as well uh, the valkyries are actually quite cheap in terms of modern weapon systems uh, currently they're going for about six and a half million dollars each however the uh, company that makes them kratos they do believe they can get the cost down to about two and a half million dollars with large enough orders. The Hav Raider UCAVs are based roughly on the American F-16, but if you do look at the images for them, it do look rather different. I'll demonstrate them now. It does look a little bit like the Australian made Ghost Bat, and indeed they do have that in the database as well. Uh, as you can see, the radar on these things is quite old and out of date. It's not really going to be much use. However, it does have F-35 level EOTS tech and as well as the Legacy Detonator and the uh, ELINT and ECM capabilities as well. However, its radar cross-section, as stated, is not all that small. It's not a stealthy uh, unmanned aerial vehicle. And if you compare that to, say, the Valkyrie, 
and we are using the US Marine Corps version. You can see, again, it's nowhere near as stealthy as, say, an F-35 or a B-21 Raider, but it does certainly have a lower cross-section than the HAV Raider UCAV. So we are going to mix in a few unmanned aerial systems just to try and deplete some of the Chinese arsenal a bit and also use them for uh, use their I-Star capabilities. They will be operating out of the US Marine Corps Expeditionary Advance Base. Uh, the, this does also have... Uh, weapon systems available to it, but the Chinese aren't going to be in range of the naval strike missile here, or at least they're very unlikely to be. So we will not really see the uh, NSM in this video. What we will get to see up close is the B-21 Raider. Uh, we will demonstrate how, just how like stealthy, both in terms of radar cross-section and in terms of infrared stealth that actually is. And we're also going to be showcasing the B-1B, the bone, uh, with its ability to carry up to 40 long-range anti-ship missiles. We're using external pylons, of course. The Chinese uh, surface action group, as said, hasn't changed, and the air wing is also unchanged, uh, as with the weather. So, first of all, I'll show you our B-21 Raiders. We have one carrying 12 long-range anti-ship missiles. We have one carrying 24 uh, AIM-260 missiles. And we also have two, both carrying 16 quick sinks each. As stated, this weapon does have quite a short range, 13 nautical miles, and we are going to have to literally get them over the top of the Chinese battle group to use them. In our first wave, we have two B1Bs, and then we also have two more bones as reserve. These are not going to take place in the initial attack. Instead, we are going to utilize them to mop up the Chinese forces. We, first of all, we want to see just how much damage we can do with just our destroyers and the first two bones, as well as our B-21s. As you can see, we do have some UAS already airborne. So we have two Valkyries. One is carrying electronic warfare, so it has offensive ECM. The other is carrying a recon module, which means it has a camera. They also do have the same radars as the F-35, the APG-81. And please note that the APG-81 is a default radar on this. So even if even if it is armed with an electronic warfare module, as this one is, it still has access to the ESA radar, which will be very useful for scouting purposes. And then we have our HAV radars. Because these are not LPI radars, low probability of intercept, uh, we're going to try and keep these radars turned off. But we are going to use them to provide some air cover for our destroyer squadron. So without any further ado, we will crack on with the scenario. And again, they have tried to turn their radars on, so let's stop that. So that has turned their radars off. And let's move our destroyers into position. We're going to send them through the middle of these islands here. And then what we also have are our bomber holding tracks. So we want these to be a little bit further away from the conflict so that we don't, um, so they don't get shot down before we actually try and utilize them. One thing you will notice is we have turned missile waypoints on, meaning that the missiles shouldn't just head straight towards the enemy's uh, fleet. They should take a slightly more of a dogleg route. So... You may notice in the tack view window, the B-21s actually look like B-2s because their modeling that has not been updated. However, for this purpose, it will serve just nicely. And there are our reserve bones heading into their position up there. So what we are going to do is get some of our um, UAVs airborne. The action plan is to use our Valkyries, the ones carrying the electronic warfare aids, to escort in the long-range anti-ship missiles, providing some jamming support. We don't have any Growlers available, so this is probably the poor man's version of that. But again, if we lose a few Valkyries, the uh, US taxpayer isn't going to be all that upset, and nor is anyone going to be losing any sleep over losing a few unmanned aerial systems, as opposed to losing manned aircraft. 
So I don't want my Hav Raiders heading too close to the Chinese fleet. Again, they're not stealthy. They won't survive. And I'd rather keep them for defending my destroyers. It is time to move our Valkyries into position. I'll switch on the electronic warfare capabilities. And also, we want to try and find the Chinese fleet. As you can see, we're already detecting the enemy helicopters. Our bombers are slowly moving up into position. Uh, we did launch them out of Darwin down here. Uh, we've got rid of the base out of Japan because it wasn't needed in this scenario. Okay, so here come our extra Valkyries. So we'll send in them to try and get a, another bead on the Chinese forces. It is worth noting that our forces, certainly uh, from the destroyer point of view, are well in range of the Chinese surface action group. Assuming those helicopters are next to him, which we believe them to be. Yep, there we are. Those are the first Chinese ships we detected. Uh, in terms of the bones, they are not yet in range, but they are getting closer to it. We are going to try and utilize a multi-domain attack here. So we're going to be using missiles launched from our destroyers, which will come in from this direction. And we're going to try and maneuver our bones to come in from the south, launching them in from that direction. So again, this should mean the Chinese have a little bit of a harder time defending against them. We do know that they have at least 250 advanced SAMs on there, including the HHQ-9 Bravo. And they also have the Alpha model as well. And this is going to take a lot to overwhelm them. We didn't manage it in the last video. Our plucky US destroyers were all polished off without inflicting a single loss on a Chinese manned aircraft or vessel. All they did is destroy a Chinese drone. It was not a good day for the US Navy. But today we are going to destroy this Chinese ba carrier battle group. There is no two ways about it. We have enough missiles here to sink it. Again, we have almost 150 long-range anti-ship missiles on our destroyers. We have another 80 on this flight of bones and another 80 on this one meaning that altogether we have almost 300 missiles to launch at the Chinese force. And then we also have another 12 here. The quick sinks will also be useful, but for that we have to get the B-21s right in behind the Chinese surface action group. And that is the plan. We're going to bring them in from the six, and hopefully the Chinese will extend most, if not all, of their SAMs on the uh, long-range anti-ship missiles and also our small diameter bombs, which we'll be using lighting shortly, which means that our B-21 should get in, deploy their ordnance against the Chinese carrier, then get out again. We do believe that even just a handful of quick sinks should break the back of the Chinese carrier and therefore sink it, but we'll put that to the test in this video. So we are going to increase the pace of our destroyers to get them a little bit closer in. And as I stated, the bombers are slowly but surely moving up into position. The first raider is in range. Bones are now in range as well, or at least the first flight is. And uh, yes, we do now have a bead on the Chinese force. They are firing at my Valkyries, but again, if I lose one of those, it's not the end of the world. What I am going to do is make sure my B-21s I do not have automatic evasion on. I want to be able to control them exactly where they go. The Chinese... I mean, the Chinese shouldn't detect them all that easily. Um, so I'm hoping that... Just that will allow them to get in pretty much undetected. And again, hopefully the Chinese will be too busy trying to swap the long-range anti-ship missiles out of the sky. Okay, so let's just check on the bones. So they've got still 400 odd nautical miles. So we don't want to be launching yet. So we will bring up the uh, long-range ship missile. This is using Command Mono Operations Database 501. And these versions actually have a longer range. They have a range of 500 nautical miles. As you can see, they have a very high hit probability. And again, they use the same tech as on the surface launch version. And yep, 450 damage points, so 450 kilogram warhead. And these can be carried by a lot of different weapon systems in this game. So the Chinese have destroyed another one of my Valkyries. Let's try and move the Havrader in a little bit closer. And we might also 
take out that AWACS if we can. And that's where our B-21 Raider is going to come in very handy. So this is a variant carrying air-to-air -air weaponry. We've armed it with 24 AIM-260s, which is arguably one of the most advanced missiles in the game and possibly in the world. We don't even really know what it looks like right now. If we go off the one in the Command and Operations database, it, has, it does have an active radar seeker, uh, and it does have a range of 120 nautical miles, has a very high PK, it has a two-way data link, uh, has the ability to lock it after launch, it can be used against aircraft, missiles and bombs. Uh, the warhead is fairly small, I think it's about the same as an, an AMRAM, and it is useful uh, on, against various targets, uh, including uh, it also has the dual, post, uh, dual pulse rocket motor. It is a long burn and does have quite a decent max speed. Its range is longer than the Meteor, but the Meteor's propulsion system, being a ramjet, is arguably superior in some circumstances. It really does depend what you go off here. But one thing's for certain, it does certainly have an advantage over the AMRAM, even the Delta model. So we are going to move our other Raider as well, the one carrying the long-range anti-ship missiles, in behind the Chinese fleet. One thing to take into account about the uh, B-21 is it does have advanced uh, avionics, including the same radar as the F-35, the APG-81. It also has F-35 tech in other ways as well, and has also offensive countermeasures, uh, communications jammers, laser designators, has plenty of weapon systems to be keeping it alive. What it doesn't have, at least as far as we're aware, is any chaffle flares or decoys for that matter. Again, whether or not they're needed, we'll have to see. So our have raiders have started engaging. We have we have lost four Valkyries and we've only shot down one J-15 so far. Right, it looks like an enemy fighter might be sneaking up on us there, so let's turn the radar around. Yep, there it is. Looks like they've launched the doors as well. Again, if we lose a HAV Raider, it's not the end of the world. I'd much rather lose a unmanned aerial system than a manned aircraft. Yep, we've, there goes another J-15. The more of those we take out, the easier it should be to sneak our bombers and missiles through. We have lost all of our eyes on the Chinese battle group, though. So let's start getting some more aircraft into the fight. Once again, we're going to turn off the radars on that because it gives them away too easily. Our rubber bones are still moving up in position. What we will do is speed up the simulation slightly at this point. Um, Looks like they are going for our raiders, or our, our have raiders. I'm happy that these are hostile, so time to engage. J-15s do have advanced AESA radars. It does mean that against non-stealthy targets like our have raiders, they should pick them up a lot earlier than we can pick them up with our ancient radars and our UASs. So let's switch on the offensive countermeasures. And the good news is we haven't actually lost a single have radar yet, which is unexpected. Some of the tests we've run, we have lost quite a few of those. Again, they're unmanned and they're, they, like I say, they don't have stealth features. They're not, they don't carry any defensive ECM or even any countermeasures, I don't believe. Oh no, they do have chaff and flares, but yeah, they don't have anything in the way of a defensive electronic warfare. So, they, they, again, they're... they're I don't want to say they're disposable, but they're certainly available to be lost, and no one's going to, again, lose much sleep over it. So, one of the plans here is to send our uh, Valkyries in down low, only slightly higher than what the missiles themselves are going to be flying at, and attempt to try and draw off some of the Chinese SAMs. So, our bones are now getting into position as well. We're going to send them down a bit lower because the bone is not a particularly stealthy platform. Um, it may have been when it was developed in the 1980s. It had stealth and radar cross-section reducing features. But as stated, it's certainly if you click on 
the uh, radar cross section of the bone. Yeah, its radar cross section is rather large. It's certainly not going to be sneaking through any air defences at high level. It was designed to get through at lower levels and then pretty much blasting anything out of the way with nuclear tipped missiles if it really needed to. So we do have our Valkyries with their small diameter bombs, the storm breakers. They're only carrying 24 of these, they can only carry four each. However, that's 24 Sams the Chinese will at least 24 Sams the Chinese will waste on our storm breakers, which maybe cost $250,000 a pop, which and in weapons munitions terms is definitely on the cheaper side. If you compare that to a long range anti-ship missile, the cost of those is in millions of dollars. I don't think they're, they're I think they're certainly over a few million. But I don't have an exact cost in front of me. But I can find out. So it's a bit like with the quick sinks as well. They certainly have a, a cheaper unit cost than say most missiles will due to the fact they are basically a two thousand pound bomb with a guidance kick bolted on I mean, you might be able to get some of those for about twenty five thousand dollars so there is an estimate that the long range and ship missiles themselves cost about three million dollars so that's probably not a bad figure to go off Again, either way, they're a lot more expensive than our Stormbreakers will be, but they're also arguably a lot more capable. So it's time to move our air-to-air -air raider into position. We do see another Chinese AWACS aircraft is moving up, the KJ-600, which is awfully similar to an American Hawkeye and... Uh, I mean, the radar on it is actually quite advanced. It can probably see a lot of um, non-stealthy aircraft at long ranges. It's not a very maneuverable aircraft, but it, yes, it does have a long-range ESA radar. It is a highly advanced, and it does carry uh, uh, electronic warfare capabilities, certainly, and a lot of ELINT capabilities as well. Uh, doesn't It's not a stealthy platform at all, so... Which, is going to, which we're going to use to our advantage here. We are going to blow it out the sky at quite long range. And just time to take another distance estimate. So now we're about 285 nautical miles. Okay, I think it is time to commence our attack with our destroyers. First things first. So let's fire off these storm breakers. We're going to launch them all at this ship here, which is a Type 55 destroyer. As you may have realised in our first simulation, those are incredibly difficult targets to kill. They do carry a lot of SAMs, including the HHQ-9 Bravo. And yeah, they, they made a mess of our Tomahawk strike last time. Not a single missile made it through. So the good thing is as well, now that these Valkyries have used their... Um, small diameter bombs up. We can utilize them in other roles. Again, distracting Chinese SAMs. Uh, and again, we also start to move in our electronic warfare capabilities. So first things first, let's start targeting some of these Chinese escorts. So our zoom walk class here, that's carrying 52 long range anti-ship missiles. We'll fire 10 at the first escort. These are only frigates. I mean, so yes, they are. They do have some SAM capability, and I'm sure that they probably will survive the first round of long-range anti-ship missiles. But then we're certainly going to start to thin them out using our uh, ones launched from the bone. So our first wave of long-range anti-ship missiles is now on the way. So now it's time to fire off the rest, and we're definitely going to aim a lot at the enemy carrier. As you may have noticed in the last um, scenario, we fired, I believe it was um, 64 Tomahawks straight at the carrier. This time we're going to do exactly the same with our surface launched 
long range anti ship missiles. So we are, we're launching a few more. We'll launch maybe just four of the Chinese supply ship, and it's not really a priority target at this point. Uh, we do want to fire a few more at the Chinese Type 55s, just because of how deadly they are. And we'll also fire a few at the final Chinese destroyer as well. Although it looks like we won't be firing them from the surface fleet, we'll be using them from the bones instead. There we are, that is... Over a hundred long-range anti-ship missiles currently heading towards the Chinese fleet. Soon to be joined by a few more. So the Chinese are responding. They have shot down one of my Valkyries. But here come the Stormbreakers. You can see a lot of Sams rising up to meet them. But again, the more Sams the Chinese fire at, those the better. If we look how many Sams the Chinese have fired. They have fired around about 40 advanced Sams. And that's, again, 40 advanced Sams that they can't fire at our long-range anti-ship missiles. Let's pull that Valkyrie back slightly. Okay, we're going to move these into position down here to cover our lances. We're going to send them down to low altitude. We're going to put them into loiter speed so they don't get too close to the Chinese fleet. It would certainly be bad for us if we lost any of those bombers. So we're also going to put the, these uh, Valkyries down to low altitude. They can cover these missiles that are coming in. So we are going to try and fire these last long range ship missiles off against th these targets. Again, the Type 55 has really got to be a priority target after the aircraft carrier. Yeah, I do believe there is a bit of a bug going on there that for some reason all the missiles aren't launching. Again, this is a better version of Command Mon Operation, so perhaps it shouldn't be a surprise there are a few teething issues, but it does run rather smoothly in general. The good thing is, our air units do not have the same limitations. They are now 135 miles away. Those have still got a little bit of time to run yet. We will pull them back slightly, just because, again, losing one of those aircraft would be bad for everyone involved. Good thing is, our other raiders are also getting into position now. So it does look like this raider has only fired one missile off. I believe it was against the Chinese early warning aircraft. Yep, so we've destroyed two of those. We've also destroyed four J-15s. We have lost 11 Valkyries. So again, it's not the end of the world. We've lost a few uh, UASs, but in an ideal world, we probably wouldn't have lost that many. I might be a little bit more conservative with them. But if we sink the Chinese carrier strike group, then no one's going to care too much. So we have sped up the simulation. Our missiles are now closing in. So they are now about 100 nautical miles away, and it's time for our bones to join the party. Again, priority targets here, we'll try and take out some of the escorts on the flank. And one of the nice things about the long-range anti-ship missiles is, if its original target has been destroyed, it will retarget itself, and it will go for a different target. We also have data link capabilities, meaning that we do also have the ability to retarget those missiles in flight. And what we're going to do, we're going to certainly launch another 20 against that carrier, meaning that we have almost, well, we have almost 85 missiles going straight for that carrier. I don't even want to do the maths of how expensive this salvo is going to be, but it's certainly going to be hundreds of millions of dollars worth of weapon systems thrown at this Chinese force. But if you take into account just how expensive an aircraft carrier and ships are, and then destroying one of those is probably equal to one the, to the cost of the weapons that are being utilised here. So we're not going to fire off our remaining long-range anti-ship missiles from this raider until our other ones are literally right on top of the targets. And then we do have our other bones over here on standby. They are in range, but we're not going to utilise them yet. 
One of the good things is the bones do have a long endurance time, long range. They can loiter for a while. I don't have to worry about in-flight refueling, which is good because we don't have any tankers on this scenario. Looks like our first missiles are now catching up with our Valkyries. You will notice that the long-range anti-ship missiles have a higher crude speed than the Tomahawk does. Should make it marginally harder to hit, make it slightly more survivable. But it's not a supersonic weapon or hypersonic weapon. The Chinese and the Russian philosophy, as always, and the Soviets before them, was to build faster weapons. The Americans have gone down the stealthier route. In this uh, version of Command Modern Operations, there is a uh, supersonic version of the long-range anti-ship missile, but it has a much shorter range of only 300 nautical miles, and also has a slightly larger cross-section. We will put that to the test in a future video, where we may also throw a few more small diameter bombs at the enemy. So, here come the Chinese interceptors. We'll move our B-21 in to hopefully intercept them before they can destroy some of our missiles. Yep, the uh, AIM-260s are firing. Some reason tack view is showing a Chinese AWACS airborne. Well, I'm pretty certain well that has definitely been destroyed. That is an easy way to to redo this. Okay, as you can see here, we do have the data links available, which do mean that the um, these missiles can be retargeted in flight. I will demonstrate as such here. That's already going for the carrier, but let's see if I was going to redirect it there to a Chinese Type 55 I could. But no, we're going to keep 84 missiles against that Chinese carrier. Okay, we are now going to move our other Valkyries into position. And now we can probably start to see the Chinese firing off a few more SAMs. Indeed, you can see there we have fired over 200 long-range anti-ship missiles at the Chinese, and they have fired over 50 SAMs at us. So now it is time to launch our attack from the rear as well. We're going to wait a little bit longer to unleash the long-range anti-ship missiles from that radar. And then we have another salvo of uh, the surface launch variants coming in from that direction. Okay, so it looks like our first missiles might be about to make contact. Yep, there goes a Chinese ship. That's one destroyed. We're already doing better than our last video where I don't think we even left a scratch on the Chinese. Certainly not their vessels anyway. What has made the that J-15 harder to hit is it does look like it has gone lower level, which does mean our AIM-260s, yeah, that's at 30 feet. Our AIM-260s from 60,000 feet won't be able to destroy that. Oh, there is one of the Chinese UAVs. They do have a pretty small cross-section, so they are a bit more of a harder target. So the Chinese defences are still uh, doing, well, they're still certainly making their mark against our long-range anti-ship missiles. Again, if we check the amount of SAMs they've fired, yep, they've fired almost, well, they've fired over 200 advanced SAMs if you include the HQ-16 in that as well. But we are, so we are depleting their stocks. At the moment, it is more of a battle of attrition. Even the stealth of the long-range anti-ship missile can't stop it from being detected and shot down at close ranges. What we will do is redirect some of these into that vessel there if we can. Doesn't look like we're able to. But yeah, there we go. If they're too close to the target, they will have already engaged their own radars. So we won't be able to, well, their own systems. They don't have radars, but they will have, yes. Yeah, so, so they will utilize their own systems when they get close to the target. It does look like a few might make it through to the carrier. We'll have to wait and see. See if we can redirect a few of those in. Again, these have already gone uh, Mad Dog, and they are going for a target which has already been destroyed, which is a bit disappointing. That's a lot of waste of taxpayers' money right there. However, we have destroyed a Chinese destroyer, or at least heavily damaged it. Chinese supply ship should also be on its way to the bottom of the ocean after that. Surely that can't take that much battle damage. 
So here we go, now it's time to launch our final 12 long range anti-ship missiles at that carrier. And we're also going to bring in our quick sinks. We're going to increase the uh, speed of the uh, B-21s. We don't want them in the Chinese uh, missile engagement zone. For, uh, well, we don't want to keep them there, let's put it that way. That raider is already on his way home. He's fired off his weapon systems. Again, our reserve bombers are down here. We can choose to utilize them whenever we want. So these are going, oh, it looks like they've been fooled by ECM. In fact, let's see if I can't help them out a bit here. Give them, give them something to aim at. Yeah, let's, there we go. So it looks like some of the missiles have gone haywire. However, these ones haven't. And what we are about to do is launch all of our quick sinks straight at this Chinese carrier. We're going to launch all 32 at it. There's no way we want this Chinese carrier to survive. This is the priority target. Slow it down a bit so they can fire all the weapons. Chinese SAMs are engaging, but they're engaging the quick sinks, not the raiders. Four left to fire, two, okay, let's send them home. We don't want to keep them dawdling around in there. Okay, so the quick sinks are going in. Looks like they are a lot of them are getting shot down. But all it takes is a few to get through. There we go. We have sunk the Chinese Shidong carrier. So now it's just a case of finishing off the rest of the Chinese surface action group. So we oh we have actually lost a B-21 raider. That's certainly not good for uh US taxpayer. Uh, I believe that was our air-to-air -air one. I probably did let it get a little bit close to the Chinese force. Yep, that's definitely a mistake on my behalf. What we do also see is the Chinese forces have launched their own barrage of anti-ship missiles. Uh, our have raiders don't have a lot of fuel or missiles left, but we will try and f locate those. What we're also going to do, send this bomber around to act a bit like an AWACS to detect these incoming missiles because I have wasted a lot of my Valkyries. In fact, I'm, yep, I've lost all 16 Valkyries. Probably could have done that a bit better. I maybe should have kept a few more alive. Chinese have launched some of their air wing. The good thing is, is they don't have anywhere to land afterwards. Uh, we may have even destroyed a few on the deck. Yep, they weren't able to scramble that many aircraft, which means our destroyers, hopefully, We'll have enough firepower to repel this Chinese attack, unlike last time where they all got sunk. So yeah, we've got a bead on the Chinese aircraft. Uh, those are the electronic warfare variants, so they are jamming our radars at the moment. Okay, let's send our remaining HAV raiders into the combat air patrol location. Okay, so these aircraft have now fired off their remaining missiles. We are going to basically keep these as a flying early warning system. So hopefully our destroyers can take out some of these missiles at long range. There's no point in turning on these guys' radars yet, especially when we've got the B-21 available. So what we will, however, do is bring our remaining bones around. Oh, so I'm detecting some Chinese weapons going the wrong direction. I wonder if our electronic warfare, the jammers on our destroyers, have fooled them. These destroyers do have effective ECM systems. And the missiles are now getting to within about 45 nautical miles of our ships. Normally the SAMs would be in range, but a SAM trying to hit a low down target does not have a high chance of PK. So we have reduced the range that they will fire. They should fire at about 50% their normal range, meaning that they should have a, a better chance of destroying the Chinese missiles. Yeah, 
Here come the vampires. We do have a bead on them from multiple sensors. Again, so our destroyers should start firing imminently. Again, we don't have any weapons directors able to illuminate them at the moment. Hopefully that will change shortly. Yep, I have raiders are now engaging some of the Chinese aircraft, and our destroyers are now also firing. So far, so good. You can see the data links there. Those are the sea sparrows getting fired. These are only the elf model sea sparrows, so they only have semi-active radar homing. Therefore, they do have to be illuminated all the way to the target. In future videos, we will assess how they perform against the Enhanced Sea Sparrow, which has the um, weapon system, well, has the radar system of an AMRAM, if I remember correctly, meaning is is a fox-free type weapon, active radar homing. So, so far so good. We haven't say, sustained any damage to our destroyers. So that B-21 Raider is definitely a loss that was my fault. I got to micromanage me to micromanage even, uh, regarding our strike. Uh, there aren't a lot of Chinese ships left, thankfully. And again, we could probably launch our attack right now with these bones. In fact, let's do that. We'll reduce their altitude a bit and then we'll unleash them. So we do have a few more missiles. Uh, we only have two AIM-260s left, but let's see if we can't at least utilize them against these missiles. Annoyingly, it does look like a lot of these missiles have lost lock. Again, the radars on the have radars, not great for this kind of interception. Probably the biggest advantage they have is the F-35 tech in the nose, which means they can detect them via their, their EOTS capabilities. Looks like these Chinese missiles have gone active. Hopefully our electronic countermeasures can throw them off. So it is now time to unleash our final wave of anti-ship missiles. Let's auto-engage. Let's see how many they fire. Okay, these missiles have now hit terminal, or have now hit well, the uh, well, they have hit the point where they speed up. So now they are going to make a harder target. Oh, we managed to do a good job of shooting those down. Well done. Bravo Zulu to all our gunners. Or to the electronic chips, which are the gunners in this case, if it's an Aegis system. Fine off a few more enhanced sea sparrows, but I'd say these are the baseline model. They are not the one with the Fox 3 capabilities. They are a Fox 1 type missile. Indeed, some of the missiles are going blind at the final stages, but there we go. That's a lot more... Well, we've definitely managed to nullify a large portion of the Chinese anti-ship missile fleet. We still have quite a few SAMs left. However, there is another wave of Chinese missiles inbound. Our raiders don't have loads of fuel left, so I can't keep them on station for much longer. So let's try and bring these ones in. Okay, so our bones have unleashed some of their weapons. However, let's fire up a few more. Let's We want this Chinese surface action group, or what's left of it, utterly destroying. Again, the Chinese, the American taxpayer rather might not thank us, but it's better than losing any more ships or aircraft to Chinese action. Uh, let's see, you know, there are some Chinese J-15Ds. Again, they have their electronic warfare capabilities on. However, we're not trying to shoot them down right now anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. 
as the Chinese don't have any land-based, well, any airfields on this, the carrier-based aircraft don't have anywhere to try and land, so they are just uselessly circling, circling their uh, own ships right now. If there was a uh, airfield in range, or even if it wasn't in range, they'd at least turn towards that and try and land there. So it does look like the Chinese are about to lose a few more aircraft, but that's not necessarily their own fault. So it looks like quite a few of these Chinese missiles have burnt themselves out, probably due to the effects of our electronic countermeasures. Therefore, the Chinese missiles are probably trying to find our ships and they're getting zigzagged around, meaning that they're going to run out of fuel. Therefore, I'm happy to send home our raiders that have been airborne since the beginning. Our remaining ones can provide a bit of a air patrol, well, more like a um, early warning system. However, they have nothing they can actually shoot down any missiles with or aircraft. As you can see, it does actually look like our uh, bones have passed off the uh, guidance for the long-range anti-ship missiles to our destroyers. This is the data links here, as you can see. Again, we have launched 20 missiles against the Type 54. I can probably reduce that, to be honest. If we aim a few more of that Type 55, just be on the safe side, it's... There we go. And let's see how our missiles do. In theory, they should all get through now. I don't think the Chinese can have many SAMs left. They might have a few very short range ones, which are have a range of about four nautical miles. They certainly is not a very long range at all. Yep, the um, HQ10, HQ10, they are have a range of four nautical miles. They're a bit like the American Sea Ram missiles. They're literally point uh, blank defensive weapons. They shouldn't have enough time, even if they do have a few left, to shoot down all of our long-range anti-ship missiles. And here we go. Oh, looks like they have managed to shoot a few down. So instead, let's send a few more just towards that to be on the safe side. So they have managed to knock a few more uh, long-range anti-ship missiles out, but surely they can't destroy them all, surely. Yep, there we go. There goes the Chinese Type 55. And as stated, a lot of these missiles were... Me well, they were meant to... Yep, there they are. They have gone for the Chinese destroyer. It did look like they might have missed for a second there. That would be very disappointing. And I do believe that is the Chinese... Both Chinese Type 55 Cs. And now going to the bottom of the ocean. Yep. So we've... And both Type 55s are dead. In fact, that is the entire Chinese fleet now sank. And a few of our missiles are just going in and hitting sinking targets. So, yep, yeah, I think it's fair to say that is mission accomplished. And all without any damage to our own destroyers this time around. Um, we did, we do have some SAMs left. So the only disappointing aspect was the fact that my stupidity led to the loss of a B-21 Raider. Hopefully, whichever American tacticians are doing this, should war ever break out, will do a better job than I have in this case. But thanks for watching, and as stated, it does look like the American long-range anti-ship missiles are certainly an excellent system. However, there is still going to be some attrition involved, and taking on a Chinese carrier strike group when they are well, they have copious amounts of SAMs is always going to be difficult. Therefore, my recommendation would probably be something along the lines of using storm breakers to try and get them to fire off some of those weapon systems first. And we will test that in a future video where we use the supersonic version of the long-range anti-ship missile, known as the long-range anti-ship missile B. Uh, so it has a shorter range, 300 nautical miles, has pretty much the same seeker system, and has a what you class as a uh, larger radio cross-section, but has a much higher top speed. Therefore, we will try and use these, but we will also uh, try and use storm breakers to try and neutralize some of the Chinese missiles first. But we'll end this video here. Thank you very much for watching this Emerging Threats Group video. And we do have a win for the US Navy.